we are back again to organics and hydrocarbons. Now, remember, these are the simplest of organic chemicals because they just have hydrogen and carbon. We had the prefixes meth, eth, pro, but, and then the ones that are easy, pentex. And we looked at the first of the types of hydrocarbons, the alkanes, ain, and that meant only single bonds between the carbons in the chain. So this one, that is lovely one that I drew last time, that had six carbons. And there's its a shorter way of putting it. That is hexane. And we call these saturated hydrocarbons. Why? Because other than the single bonds right here, every other bond goes to the hydrogens. It has the most number of hydrogens in the alkanes. Those are saturated hydrocarbons. Our first note is the unsaturated hydrocarbons. Those are alkenes and alkynes. And just like the alkanes, you use the prefix in ane, you'll use the same prefixes and ene or ine. Now, if an alkane is a single bond only between the carbons, A, next file is E, what do you think an alkene is? What would an alkyne, A-E-I, Y for I? If you're thinking that, you're right. Okay, a double or triple bonds anywhere just one of them, between carbon atoms, if you have one double bond, that makes it an alkene. If you have one triple bond, that makes it an alkyne. Can you have them both together? Yes, we're not going there, okay? All right, so we have a double bond somewhere in the chain, or it could be more than one. A triple bond in the chain, possibly more than one. So alkenes, at least one, double bond between the carbon atoms in the chain. And as I told you already, it's going to have ene in it. That's the end. That's the suffix. Well, what's, what goes in front of ene? How many carbons? Okay. Propene. That means it has a double bond between a carbon and a carbon out of the three. Okay, that's an example, and here's one. That is 2-butene. What is the 2 for? It tells you that if you number the carbons, if this is carbon number 1, this is carbon number 2, the double bond is on carbon number 2. Well, what if I started from this side? Carbon number 1, carbon number 2 it's still a double bond on carbon number two from either side. So but two butene, you will also see it written this way. The two being right next to the ene saying the double bond ene is on carbon number two of four carbons. So, um, Technically, the way it's in the PowerPoint is the old way, 2-butene. But-2-ene is the newer IUPAC, International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists, and there's a whole book on organics. We're just scratching the first page, looking at it lightly, okay, on the naming and things like that. All right, so that's an alkene. The, another example of the ene is ethene. What's that going to be? Eth, yeah, two carbons, and it has a double bond. It's technically called ethene. Well, well why don't you call it eth1ene or 1-ethene? 
There's only two carbons. There's a double bond between them. You don't have to number it. You only put numbers when there's a possibility of it being in more than one place. Well, that 2-butene, butene, where else could it have been? Between the first and the second carbon. Okay, the double bond. That would be 1-butene or but-1-ene between number one and number two. But what, couldn't you still call that two? No, you only use the lower number. You don't need to know all this, but in, I know you have, wait a minute, well, why, why couldn't you? <laughs> Those questions just come up, so I'm giving you the answers. Okay, that's also, that's its common name, ethene. I mean, its technical name is ethene. Its common name, ethylene. Uh, that is a gas that helps fruit to ripen. And some fruits give off that gas as they are ripening and that's why when you put certain fruits in bags they ripen faster because the one that is closer to ripening you know it was like a, a banana all the bananas are green you have a yellow banana it's getting ripe it's going to give off more of the ethene ethylene gas if you have it in a bag to help trap it that activates the ripening process in the others and that's also why once it gets spoiled, that spoiling goes to others. So you don't want to do that. Um, a poly, not poly want a cracker, but polyethylene. Poly means many that we repeat what? We repeat the ethene, the two carbon double bond over and over again and make a long chain of those polyethylene. Many ethene molecules joined in long chains. You know what that is? That's your bag that that fruit is in. That's a polyethylene bag. One of the plastic bags. And it's literally that carbon, double bond carbon, and that continues in a long chain. And you make a three, well, essentially two, it's very thin, but it does have some thickness to it. You make that bag, that structure, sort of say three-dimensional, out of that, those long chain of ethene. Okay, now remember it's double or triple. The alkenes have double bonds. The alkynes have at least one triple bond between carbon. There's ethene. Now, we don't have to, again, put a number on that because it's just between the two carbons. And that suffix, "-ine", means triple bond. Now, the common name for ethine that you see right there is acetylene. Okay. Two carbons, one triple bond, ethine, acetylene. And that's an acetylene torch. And that is a substance that burns at a higher temperature than just using a propane torch. Okay, so um, you take, I think that you actually have acetylene and oxygen together. I'm not positive on that. I'm not a welder. Some of you, some relative may be, maybe in your family, they know more about it. Check on that and see. But it gives you a very, very high temperature when it breaks those bonds. Um, here's another one. Well, this is ready for this. Whoo! How do you say that? Calcheomycin or mycin. That tends to be a lot more common. Calcheomycin. That's an alkene between two alkynes, and it's actually an anti-tumor drug that's um, used to kill the tumor, one of the chemotherapy drugs that is used with cancer. So that has enes and ines. Now notice that's not its IUPAC name, or it would have en and ine in it. It's a, a common name that I gave you there. Okay, um, let's talk about something called aromatic hydrocarbons. Now, when you see that aroma. Now, back in the 1800s, 
as this was going through, and, and I mentioned, you know, 200 years ago of making roughly organic, say, 1830, 40. When you get into the mid, later, 50, 60, 70, um, they started getting a lot of these different compounds. They noticed commonalities, kind of like with the periodic table. And, oh, these have a aroma. I, I think that's, that's going a little bit far. <laughs> when you say aroma... You think of something like, oh, coffee. Now, I love the smell of coffee. I think it smells wonderful. But as much as I love the smell, I hate the taste. I can't touch it. I mean, you want to give me torture? All right, drink that 32-ounce mug of coffee, and we'll give you a million dollars. It's horrible. I, I don't know how you can drink it, those of you that love it. So, yeah, I'm a teetotaler. <laughs> um, Earl Grey. Hot. <laughs> um, anyways, it, the point is that this stuff smelled. <laughs> okay. Aroma. <sighs> okay. That was its early way of distinguishing it. Now, there's a better way, but we still call it aromatic. And the better way is it has a specific chemical called benzene in it. What is benzene? Well, that's after you've looked at it, it's benzene. No, that's not it. It's this. It is a six-carbon ring. Now, you remember, I think when I was scratching out substances, I don't have that paper here, I might have it around somewhere, I drew a ring and it had six carbons in it. That, technically, that's called, you don't need to know, cyclohexane. It has six carbons with single bonds. But if I change that and put a double bond on every other carbon, look at it. There's a double bond here and here and here. That chemical and its technical IUPAC name is uh, one three, five, um, cyclohexatriene, or cyclohexatri-135-ene, naming that according to IUPAC. We just use the common name, benzene. A benzene ring, six carbon atoms in a ring, each of them have only one attached hydrogen. If we took that, uh, you don't need to know this, if we took that cyclohexane, this hexane, and put it together, it was C6H14. When we put it together, we'd knock off those two hydrogens at the end to join the carbons together, and that would be six, C, sorry, C6H12. Well, when we form those double bonds, other hydrogens come off, and you each carbon has only one hydrogen. You get that one-to-one -one ratio. So with an attached hydrogen atom. And those three extra bonds, they don't actually stay right there. They actually move around. So they're moving around in the ring. What does that mean? They're loose. Uh, the technical term is used is delocalized. It's like we talked about with metallic, where all of those outer electrons are being shared by all of the metal atoms. Well, here, those three bonds, those electrons are being shared by all six, just in that ring. So they don't go everywhere. Those electrons stay in the ring. And as I said, they're called loose electrons. Well, how do you know this kind of stuff happens? Well, we can actually measure the length between one carbon and another carbon atom if it's got a single bond or double bond or triple bond. What do you think would happen as you go from a single to a double bond? Is that going to be longer or shorter? You've got more bonds. What's it going to do? Yeah, pull them tighter. I'm just making up these numbers. They could be totally wrong. I'm, I off the top of my head from 40 years ago, a single bond, let's say it's 1.8 angstroms. 
and a double bond is 1.2 angstroms. Then in this benzene ring where it has six regular bonds and three extra bonds for each six carbons. So it has a total of nine bonds for six carbons. That's one and a half bonds per carbon. So 1.2 for a, uh, 1.8 for a single, 1.2 for a double, 1.5. And we measure the benzene ring and oh, it's 1.5. So that's how we say it seems like there's loose, we can't see those electrons, but the bond length shows. I just gave that as an example. You don't need to know any of that. But when teachers spout out things like, well, those electrons are loose and circling around, how do you know that? There are often ways we can tell in science. So the uh, extra electrons move around in a ring. And that benzene ring looks like that. Now here's a shortcut. Instead of drawing all of that, you can do that. That looks like a nut that goes on the end of a bolt. The six sides, that's where you would put your wrench on. And then the circle, that's you know um, where the thread would go on the nut as it goes into the bolt. Well, those six sides, that's the carbon atoms in the ring. The circle represents those three extra bonds that are circling around. So you can draw that shortcut way instead of drawing the six carbons and that as opposed to drawing it all out, just a little shorter. Okay, now the last thing we're going to talk about is isomers. Don't confuse that with isotope. What is an isotope? is when you're talking about an element and you're not changing the number of protons that would make a different element. You're not changing the number of electrons that would make an ion. Remember cations positive, anions negative. What's left? Change the number of neutrons and you have a heavier or lighter isotope of that element. I said all carbon atoms are the same. Well, with one exception, that was the isotope. Okay, that's past. An isomer has nothing to do with an isotope. That's for an element. An isomer is, we're talking about here. It's different ways to rearrange the same atoms. Remember I talked about my Christmas chains. And if I was getting ready to put it up and somehow I didn't notice and I didn't put the last link, uh, oh, here's one last piece of paper. I didn't put it on the end. I went in one carbon and put it there. And I'm looking, oh, wait a minute, that's not right. So I take the staple off, open it up, and put it on the end link. I've actually made an isomer. Isomers have the same molecular formula. Now, what would that molecular formula be with my ring? It would be like, okay, how many, how many yellow pieces of paper do you have? How many reds? How many greens? How many blue? That's my formula. You know, I've got a 20 in a ring, uh, 20 in a row, and I've got four of these and 10 of those, whatever. Okay, that's the chemical formula. Now, uh oh, I didn't put it on the end. I put it inside. Oh, I opened it up. I put it on the end. I, I didn't change how many pieces of each color. It's got the same chemical formula, molecular formula, but it has a different structure. Okay, so whenever you have to pull that atom or it could be several atoms, off the end of the chain and put it not on the same carbon, but on a different carbon. So pull that carbon atom off and move it somewhere else. You've made an isomer. It's got a different structure, but it's the same formula. And I did that before with a C6H14s on hexane. 
that little change in structure can produce a lot of changes in the physical and chemical properties. Uh, you take hexane and it may not burn very well. It may not be one of those things that makes smooth burning gasoline, like octane. But if I take one of those carbons off and stick it on somewhere else, there's still six carbons. Now it's a five carbon chain with that group hanging off, that carbon hanging off. It has different properties. It may burn better, it may burn worse as far as how smoothly it burns, but it's going to change those kind of properties. Okay, let's look at those. Here's the pentane. That's a five carbon straight chain. And remember um, that that chain for pentane, it could have looked like this. Okay, that is still pentane. Because if I take my hand, go like that, what's it going to look like? What you see in the picture there? Yeah, those five carbons with the hydrogen. Remember, the hydrogens are still around there. Okay, there's three on each end. Look at the picture there. You see the three carbons, uh, three hydrogens on each end of carbon. And then the middle carbons have two hydrogens. There they are. I really should have that one over there, not here. Okay. So it's the same thing. It just looks different. That's not an isomer. To make an isomer, I must... And I have to stick it to a different carbon and not the other end carbon. So if I took this carbon off and then I stuck it over here, that's still one, two, three, four, five in a chain. So you have to pull the end carbon off and stick it not at the end to make an isomer. And that's what we're going to do. That's a C5H12. That's its formula. That's what we're going to do right there. That's isopentane, an isomer of pentane. Now, that's not its IUPAC name. It's formal name. It's an isomer of pentane. It has on this carbon a carbon hanging off. Um, that is actually, it's IUPAC, and you don't need to know this, is 2 methylbutane because there are four carbons and on carbon number two there's and that's not a methane it's a methyl because it doesn't have a hydrogen there again you don't need to know it you'll get it in chemistry there are names for each of these substances that's the common name is isopentane and it also is c5h12 same molecular formula here's another isomer that's called neopentane. What we do, we took this carbon off and then attached it here, and that's what you see there. If I say take this end carbon off and attach it right up here, then you get this. Oh, and its formula is going to be C5H12. It has three carbons, and there's a group hanging off. Uh, what's its name? Well, technically, it would be um, dimethylpropane. You wouldn't have to number it because the only place it can be is in the middle. Some purists would say 2,2-dimethylpropane, that there are two methyl groups, not methane, because methane is a carbon and four hydrogens. It only has three hydrogens, so it's called a methyl group. So there's two methyl groups off of propane. Those are the isomers that happen from five carbons. Okay, what are the isomers that happen from six? I thought you'd never ask. Okay, are you ready? There they are. That's hexane or normal hexane. If I take that carbon off and put it here, that's, you don't need to know this, that's two methyl pentane. Those X's are showing I could have it here, here, or here. And it would still be 2-methylpentane because if you take it and flip it, 
then it's not below, it's above. If you flip it and rotate it 180 degrees, it's going to be up here. And then if you flip it, so any one of those are the same place. Um, I could take that carbon and hang it off of the middle carbon, three methyl pentane, there or there. Okay, done. Cut that one off. Put those two methyl groups there, two two dimethyl. Put the two methyls there, two three dimethyl. This is just a little taste. Now, you remember I talked about the enes? You get even stricter names with that. Now, these have the newer names on this. These are the hexene isomer. That was hexane. That's all the ones there were. There was five. There's all of these 12 isomers. There's hex one ene single bond, hex two ene between number one and two, between two and three, between three and four. Then we cut one carbon off. We have an ol group, a methyl group. Two methyl pent one ene, three methyl pent one ene, four methyl pent one ene, okay. two methyl pent two ene. 2 methyl, sorry, 3 methyl pent 2 ene, 4 methyl pent 2 ene. Why is there 5? Because that would be a long chain. Okay, then you cut that lat next one off. You've got butene, but 1 ene with 2, 3 dimethyl. Uh, can you have 2, 2? Well, that's an interesting question. It can't because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that'd be 5 bonds. You can only have 4 bonds. Okay, so we have 3,3, dimethylbutanoine, and the last one moved the double bond to the middle. Oh, hey. Nope, that's right. Okay, 2,3, dimethylbutanoine. For a second there, I was thinking I had it mis misnumbered. Um, so there are 12 hexene isomers. Now, I have a sheet with octane isomers. I think there were 18 or 19 of the octane isomers done in the same method. If you went to octene, I'm guessing you'd have around 40 isomers of an eight carbon chain. So what you have to have is eight carbons and one double bond. Okay, that would be octene and different isomers. As I said, I'm guessing there's like 40. I know there's 18 octane isomers. So this is, and you don't need to know, as I said, what goes on with organics, the strict naming system, how we get it, how we rearrange it. Um, can you see a little bit more each time of why I said there are millions and millions of carbon compounds? I haven't looked at the CAS, Chemical Abstract Services Database. The last time I checked, I want to say it was somewhere around 80 million, but I might be wrong on that. It was up there, 60, 70, 80 million compounds. And of those, almost all of them, I don't even know if there's 1 million inorganic. There's a bunch. I think I mentioned that to you already. Millions and millions and millions of these organic and thousands without carbon because you just don't have the variety in these chains and, and rings and all that kind of stuff with double and triple bonds without having carbon. Okay, we're done.